Alrighty, uh, welcome everyone to the Grower Coach Garden Show. Ken Salvo here today. Uh, we are talking about uh, stuff to do with spring. Uh, we've made it this far. It's now uh, approximately around the 10th of February, 2021, and we are making progress. Um, we're going to be uh, chatting about a few things that are that are important right at this time of year and some things that uh, we can look forward to this year as well. So uh, we're going to uh, kick off the show here today with uh, a few topics that we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about pruning, about the two different categories of pruning, the ornamental pruning and the fruit tree pruning, and sort of just separate those out a little bit and, and, and show you what the differences are. And we're also going to talk about uh, a few other things, some upcoming plants and perennials that are coming down the pipes, like the hellebores, which is something that's pretty cool. There's always a bunch of hellebores out there that are uh, doing fantastic now. Uh, this year, things are starting a little bit early, like we're, we're kicking it off here. Here it is just really the first part of February, and a lot of them are just in full bud, ready to go. Now, a couple of years ago, um, the uh, hellebores were pushing up really early and they got stung really bad. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along here, for sure, because uh, it's important. And there's a few tips I'm gonna give you today about that. So, so stay tuned for that. Um, also, a couple other things is just, uh, as far as the plants and new plants for for 2021, uh, I've got I've got a few websites we're going to have a look at. I'm going to see if I can just share the screen with you here today. And what we'll do is we'll just go through a few pictures and uh, give you some ideas of some of the new plants that are coming down the pipes. Some that I'm excited about and some that I'm sure you'll be excited about as well. So um, so stick with me through that. And uh, we also talk about uh, a little bit more about some of the insects that are that are coming around and what's happening with these temperatures that we're having. And we might be in for a bit of a surprise if we don't get at least some cold weather before the end of this winter. So we're going to have to look out for that. So anyway, uh, for today, again, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a few different things. And I'm, I'm also going to introduce a few slides into the, into the program here today. And this is what we do when we do our webinars is we will run slides on the show. So today's uh, program will actually give you an idea of what the webinars are sort of like and sort of how we talk about uh, those particular topics. So um, uh, there, we've been having a really good uh, uh, turnout so far this year. So we started our, our webinars uh, just back about three weeks ago now. And we're running them typically every Saturday. And uh, we either do one or two classes on Saturday. And then we'll sometimes do them on a Monday or a Wednesday, depending on the depending on how you know intense the schedule is. So just uh, keep that in mind that that those things are 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 happening. And you just go to growcoach.com. You can click on the learning tab, and you can click on the webinar of your choice. And all you have to do is sign up, and you'll be emailed a uh, connection to that webinar. Uh, just a little bit before it starts. There will always be a reminder a day or two ahead just to remind you that it's coming up. And then, uh, yeah, all you have to do is show up, click on that uh, that link just before the webinar and you're good to go. So super easy. And again, uh, as the spring progresses here, uh, we're going to have a, a real good uh, a selection of those uh, webinars for you. Everything to do with gardening, everything from sort of a professional aspect right through to, you know, the backyard gardener and uh, some of the basic techniques. So, so stay tuned for that and uh, maybe we'll see you there. All right, uh, just uh, we'll go right to our main topic today, which is um, really about pruning. And if you start your pruning really, really early, like say in the fall, well, then you're, you're making cuts in the plants and, and you're opening up wounds and you've, you've cut through the, the stem. And now the stem is, is starting to, you've opened up a wound, so the stem is starting to become infected. The cells around here are, are going to become uh, damaged or frozen over winter and then that's where uh, these pathogens or diseases can actually enter into the plant. The plants what they're doing is they go into the fall is they're trying to seal themselves up. So everything they do is all about sealing. So that means that anywhere there's buds or stems or anything they, they very carefully protect they protect all the buds and everything by by just sealing themselves up and covering them with, with these little bud scale scars or bud scales, sorry, that, that cover up those buds. And I'll give you an example here. 
I always have my assortment of branches to, to that I can work with. Um, but like this is a, is a magnolia stem and you'll see that, that uh, these buds are all nicely protected in a little fur coat. So with some, some flowering trees and flowering plants they actually produce their buds back in August. And so that's when the, the buds are forming and then they, they'll start to prepare them for winter. But as they go into September, that's when uh, these, these actual uh, furry little coats are actually, they're furry little scales, they're called. And each scale is, is sealed. It's sealed that bud so it can't desiccate and it can't, can't die back and it can't, it can't dry out or it can't get moldy or anything because it's sealed in there. So the thing that happens is, is that the whole tree is trying its hardest to seal up as it goes into winter so that every little crack and crevice is protected so that when it goes in, it's not going to suffer from those issues that could lead to disease issues. So the, the trees and plants know what to do, but do the humans know what to do? So with that in mind, as we, as we you know, approach spring, you know, I, that's why I prefer to kind of leave things as much as I can right through the winter. And then as we start getting through February, towards the end of February, and the brunt of winter is over, so hopefully the coldest temperatures are over, then what we do is we just go ahead and we can get in there and, uh, and start snipping away and we can take out all the dead wood, which we can pretty much do that at any time. It's a little hard to identify sometimes, but um, you know we can we can shape that plant the way we want. So the, the ultimate thing really is though is is why we leave them until the end of February. You will see orchardists and uh, people who have thousands and thousands of trees to do, especially with fruit trees, is they'll get those things started right around Christmas time and they'll get going and uh, they've got a lot to do. So it's not, you know, it's a timing issue. I'm sure if they could just leave them all till, you know, the end of February, get them all done just before plants start to you know get energetic and before the temperatures start warming up then they're all ready to go with their early spring spray schedules you know that um, all they really have to do is beat those schedules but again for us for people who just have a backyard and they have a couple fruit trees well we have that luxury we can wait right till the time is right so that's why we typically leave it till that time so there's a, there's a couple other things to do with pruning especially the difference between the fruit tree and then the ornamental tree so ornamental trees are basically left alone to grow their own natural shape you don't have to be in there teaching the plant how to grow or anything the only thing you have to do as a pruning person is go in and remove the diseased wood or, or damaged wood or dead wood you can remove those things at any time on the ornamental. And all we're gonna do then is just make sure that the tree's got some general direction. You know, it's, it's not gonna do anything that's really bad for itself. And, and again, in our pruning seminars, when we, we get right into the details of that and why and how, how that all works. So today we're just gonna to touch on it really lightly. But, uh, but again, with, it's a different ball of wax when it comes to ornamental pruning. You really, the tree knows how to grow and it's almost less is more. The less we do to it, the less the plant responds to our pruning. Every time we do something to a tree, it responds and it starts to do something because we cut off a branch, now it grows 10 branches. So if you just leave it, it doesn't, it doesn't there's nothing to respond to. It just keeps growing in its own natural shape. So when it comes to trees, especially ornamental trees, we're always selecting those trees because of their form, their actual silhouette. Like, what is it? What do they look like? What, you know, uh, what's their natural shape, really? So when I choose a tree, I'm choosing it for ultimate size over about 25 years, but I'm also choosing it really number one is silhouette because you know, I can pick a real skinny tree, like a tree that grows just like a pencil shape if I need to have screening and it's a very narrow little space. Uh, if I just need a small tree, something that might be less than say 20 feet or so, well, then I can pick a small tree and plant it in there. And if I want a really big tree, something I have lots of room and I just want something that's big and fast, because remember that, that big trees grow fast and small trees grow slow that you know that's also a maintenance flag there right so when the when when these plants when you're picking these plants if you if you put the right tree in the right spot 
you will have a lot less to do in the future. And that's, uh, that's for sure. So again, you know, that's what it all boils down to is that you, you know, we're going to try to get the right tree in the right spot. Sometimes we, we will inherit a, a bad situation. So that's where um, you, you buy a property or something and you move in and somebody's just planted trees for the sake of planting trees. And they didn't really know how big that tree was going to get, or they put it too close you know, they just put it too close to the walkways or the driveway or something. And as the tree grows and lifts, it starts to crack the driveway, it breaks the concrete, you know, it's causing some issues. So when you have those issues, you know, like you can try to, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to try to, to trim and prune that tree forever and ever to try to keep it in that space, or are you going to bite the bullet, get rid of that tree right away and put in something that's the right tree and even just eliminate that tree altogether is sometimes a better choice. But we want to plant trees. Trees filter the air. We need lots of trees. But, you know, put them in the right spots and then it doesn't become a problem. So the whole thing with ornamental trees is just leave them alone. When it comes to fruit trees, on the other hand, we're pruning for completely different reasons. Like with a fruit tree, we're pruning it to thin it out, to open it up, to let the sunlight shine down inside and get a little bit more on the fruit. We're, we're allowing better air circulation with, throughout the plant. Um, most, well, all fruit trees need to be sprayed at some point. So it doesn't matter if it's organic or, or whatever your method is of spraying, they still need to be sprayed. Organic, um, organic people actually spray a lot more than do people who are non-organic because their, their products are safer. So they don't have long residual effects. They're, they're safer for the environment, safer for the, uh, for the good and bad insects or for the good insects, sorry. So you wanna definitely um, you know, just be aware of that, that those trees need to be sprayed regardless of what system you're using. And in order to do that, you need to trim or prune the tree into a shape that makes it easy to spray. Pretty straightforward. The other thing is picking. So where does the fruit come? So in our pruning classes, we talk a lot about each, each individual different types of, uh, of fruits, especially in our fruit tree pruning, our, our fruit tree care uh, webinars coming up in early March. Uh, that particular one, we talk about each individual type of fruit tree and where they fruit, what type of wood they fruit on. So if you have a, you know, if you are, um, you have a peach tree or a cherry tree or a plum tree or whatever it is, you can, uh, you can sort of pick it or prune it specifically to remove excess fruit or fruit that's very difficult to access. Uh, sometimes, you know, people let their trees get way too big and you just can't access the fruit. So you keep the fruit where it's super easy to get to, where it's easy to access. And then uh, you just sort of understand the growth of the tree beyond that point. So I actually, as I was saying off the top, is I have a couple slides here today that I'm, I'm just going to show you really quick here. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's really this really clear understanding. It's really unfortunate when we see somebody prune an ornamental tree like a fruit tree because they've learned how to fruit prune fruit trees. So then they just assume naturally that, that ornamental trees should be pruned that way. And that's, that's not right. That's, that's generally a bad idea. Uh, so really just keeping those two completely separated is clear. And that's where I'm hoping we're gonna be able to clarify some of this here uh, today. Uh, just a quick little uh, check there to make sure I have my program set up. And uh, we're just gonna go straight into our, our uh, pruning a couple of slides here, and these are slides I've got all, I've got literally hundreds of different seminars and webinars that we do. So, uh, but these are just a couple slides. Whatever it is that you prune, these are some of the basic rules. So number one, always use really sharp tools. You know, those sharp, those tools should be just like super, super, super sharp as best they can be or brand new is, you know, for people who don't prune very much, if, you, if you're just using old tools and they're not very good quality, you know, spend, you know, if you're going to splurge on a few gardening things in 2021, you know, it's a good idea that some of them are pruning equipment and things like good folding saws, you know, the razor tooth saws and some really good pair of pruners, of course. So always have mine on ready, good to go. Um, so use sharp tools, um, check out where your plant blooms or fruits. So that is that, you know, apples prune, bloom on certain types of wood and uh, cherries bloom on other types of wood, which again, we, we talk about in detail and show you pictures of all that in our seminars. But the, uh, you know, if you understand where your fruit tree fruits, 
you will have a much better chance of, of producing a tree that's going to give you really good production right where you want it. And um, I always have a couple extra tips on that. But one of, one of the uh, tips that, that I'll just give you right now on that particular topic is that um, if, you, if you're new to fruit tree pruning and, and you want to, you might go out early and do a few big cuts, but when it, once you've got your basic scaffolding and you're not sure where the plant fruits, you can take a pause and wait until maybe towards the end of March when those particular trees um, you know, are starting to bloom. And when you see those blooms coming on, you can see exactly where the fruit comes. So that's when, generally when they're just starting to, to, once you can see that the flowers are visible, then you can go in and do some more pruning and it sort of teaches you where to plant fruits. So you can't really go wrong. I would just say, I wouldn't go too much past, you know, uh, once the trees start really leafing out and becoming very lush, that's a time when the trees are more delicate. So I prefer to, to get it done sort of in the early part of blooming if you're gonna wait that long. So, Look at possible uh, timing issues. So that was one of the issues. I don't want to wait too, too late. Um, I don't want to do it in the fall. Ideally, I want to sort of time it. Um, soft fruits are particularly uh, susceptible to certain diseases and things. So we want to kind of push that a little bit later. So, um, you know, we want to look at that and sort of keep it <laughs> just a little bit uh, uh, closer to March, end of February, that sort of timing. So selective removal of branches will, will not affect uh, blooming on certain things. So when it comes to um, shrubbery and that sort of thing, that if you just, instead of just like cutting the whole thing back with a hedge trimmer or just chopping it off, you know, you're really gonna affect the flowering on, that, on those plants by doing that. So if you're just selectively removing branches to achieve the shape you want, so by literally stuff sticking out the sides, I wanna get rid of that. So remove those entire branches right to the bottom. Couple branches way too high. So just selectively remove those out. And you're not really affecting the plant that much. And actually you encourage some new growth to come up from those cuts that you made, which that's really healthy growth. So that's good. But you haven't affected the blooms because the, the wood is in its exact state. You're not cutting the ends off of it. So prune in winter or spring to encourage vigor. So that is if, if plants, you want to rejuvenate shrubbery or trees or that sort of thing, get them going. You always do it in the, in the dormancy period. And again, closer to spring is sort of ideal, but anytime during winter or spring will tend to make plants grow faster. That's why we don't always prune for size because if we try to prune for size, especially during the dormancy period, they just outgrow whatever it was previous. So you, you, you don't really have success that way. So pruning in the summer will often reduce the plant's response. That's a key thing. So in the summertime, it's not, it's not that we've often said, and I've said it myself, that in the summertime, you, it almost causes a bit of a, a, a reduced effect, uh, almost not really like a dwarfing effect, but it sort of, it doesn't really do anything because what happens is, is plant, plants don't respond much to summer pruning. In the spring, they respond by growing like twice as much growth. But in the summertime, when you prune, the plant really doesn't respond, it just kind of sits there. So uh, that's kind of a good thing. So that means that if you want to maintain plants or kind of keep them in check, that they're, your final pruning of the year, typically at the beginning of August is ideal. And uh, then you can, you know, you can get the effect that you want and it'll hold, it'll stick there all the way until the next year. And, and just a quick, you know, why that happens is because plants predominantly grow between about the beginning of May and about the middle of July, and that's your window. And so during that period that they're growing is not usually a great time to prune because you can damage the plant. And if you prune before that, it, we know it encourages a bunch of rapid growth. So we just wait till after the growth phase, do our pruning there, and the plant doesn't really respond much. It'll respond a little depending on the plant, but not much, so that's good. So uh, don't, cut, don't cut too close to the trunk. So it doesn't matter what it is you're pruning when you're pruning a tree is always leave a little bit of a stub. And you know, that sometimes is backwards to what people you know, may, may have learned. And I know years ago, we always used to tell people, no, 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 don't, don't leave a stub because it'll cause you know, problems. But the reality is, is trees actually would rather respond to a little bit of a stub 
And when I say a stub, I kind of think in that, you know, half an inch to an inch is, is acceptable. But again, in our pruning seminars, we talk about the branch collar and how that's part of the trunk. And we don't ever want to cut into branch collar because it'll cause a big dieback around that branch. So there's some pretty easy ways to identify that. And I don't have those slides today, but uh, again, uh, you know, our pruning seminars are coming up. We're going to have a bunch here around the end of February for sure. So stay tuned to growercoach.com. Okay, so uh, when pruning uh, shrubs, uh, rejuvenate as you go. And, and that's a really great tip. And we, again, we show you how to do that. But basically what you do is you're going to be removing a couple of big old branches in a shrub every spring or every, at the end of every winter. You just go in and you find the biggest, oldest, like half, you know, generally you can tell because the bark is really old and ratty looking and it just looks old and it's, it's kind of gray and it's peeling and, and the leaves on that old wood are really small. And then you'll see this really nice colorful wood coming up, which is really healthy. That's the young juvenile growth. And that juvenile growth, it could be kind of reddish or pinkish or or even a nice green color, which you can tell that just means it's, it's juvenile. And look at the leaf difference. The leaves are huge on these, uh, on this new growth and small on the old growth. So it's telling you that though that old growth is, you know, it's not super healthy. It's got lots of problems with its, uh, with its vascular system where the juices are flowing, things are getting clogged up a bit. So if every spring we cut out a big chunk of that old stuff, that's rejuvenating as you go. Really good idea. Let some of the young stuff take over. Pruning paint is not required. That's something we mentioned that, uh, you know, that pruning paints are, are something that's typically sold by garden centers. And I can't really think of any actual uses for it, but um, they found in some cases that it actually caused, uh, it would actually trap diseases within the, the tree. Generally a wise idea just to let the tree do its own thing. Make a nice clean cut with super sharp tools, that's the key. Okay, so again, this ornamental deciduous tree category, uh, these are just some basic things, but maintain a central leader. So that means that you try not to have co-dominant leaders. So you don't want branches that do this. You don't want that. You just want to, if, if you have a young tree, you take one out and just get one central leader all the way up. And the one central leader is always going to be stronger. It's going to give you strength over the long term and it's much easier to manage a tree. Now, some species of trees don't really care for that idea because they have way too many central leaders. So it's not always applicable to every tree, but any tree like a maple tree or anything like that, especially when they're young, always maintain one central leader. So maintaining constant taper, that's another thing that we do. So right from the earth, right from the ground up, all the way up, it's just gradual change in taper all the way right to the very tips of the branches. And when it comes right out to the very tips, it should just gradually get smaller and smaller and smaller till it hits the tip of the branch. As soon as somebody comes along and hacks the branch in half, you know there's gonna be a problem there. So now you got this big stub and now so much for your taper right? So we're talking ornamental trees here, not fruit trees, but ornamental trees, you don't hack off branches half, halfway along. You selectively remove the entire branch or a small branch lit, so a small piece, a small branch, but always whole branches are removed, and that just makes a healthier situation and a stronger situation for all those trees. Once somebody cuts a branch in half, that branch is considered to be damaged, so now it's got to be removed as one of those damaged branches one of those damaged parts of the tree that we remove every time that a tree is pruned. So you don't want your whole tree to be damaged. <laughs> you have to remove so much, it takes years to get them back on track. So don't prune for size. That's, uh, that's one, of the cool, one of the best tips you'll ever hear about ornamental pruning for ornamental trees is that you don't prune for size. You select varieties or species for size. Uh, because it, when you cut back plants, they generally respond and grow way too fast and way too big. So if there's a specific tree you want or a certain color, you know, try not to be too stuck in your ways, but to say, if you like pink flowers, you know, then, you know, look at all the trees that have pink flowers and decide, well, these ones are way too big. And, but this one is a nice small tree. It only gets about 20 feet over 10 years or whatever. And remember that time is that fourth dimension when it comes to plants. 
that you know you can you know how long how long are you going to live <laughs> how long are you going to be in that house then you know if you're only going to be there a short time maybe you want to buy a big tree so it grows super fast and gives you shade right away rather than waiting and then let someone else worry about cutting that tree down later on but unfortunately those decisions have to be made right so uh yeah it should have should have been originally selected for its silhouette and i mentioned that right off the top was that you, that's how you choose a tree is the first thing you do is you say well i, I want a tree you know given this area I, I want it to be really wide and sort of almost rectangular so so you know quite high 30 feet high but about 35 40 feet wide would be ideal you know that's a perfect tree for that spot or i want just that little lollipop tree that's just like you know your standard type of tree that you would see or i want a multi-stem tree that's got branchy based on the space i have or hey the space is so small i better get a columnar tree something that grows very narrow you know, so that's your first choice. Then the second choice, again, you'd say, well, how big does that grow? And with the shape or the silhouette I've selected, you know, is that going to be too big for that spot? And of course, the rate of growth is part of that, that, you know, if we pick a big tree, it's going to grow fast, the small trees grow slow. So there's always a, a lot of things to consider when it comes to selecting a tree, but those are really the most important ones. So let's flip over to fruit trees now and we'll find that in the fruit tree category that we're pruning uh, to let in light. That's, that's really important and especially with peach trees and things you always want to keep the inside opened up so you get lots of light coming through because the peaches that get a little bit of sunlight they tend to be much nicer and sweeter and of course you have to thin them. You're only allowed one peach about every 10 inches or so on the tree so remember that the peach trees always overproduce. <laughs> that's a really important tip when it comes to peaches uh, but prune for easy picking you know I, I don't want to get on a ladder I, I have no intention of ever picking fruit from a ladder so you know I just eliminate that by growing my tree really short and stocky and, and shaping it outwards so we dictate the shape to the tree and so for easy picking just make it easy on yourself you're the one pruning it get rid of the stuff that's way up too high that's that's not not useful so prune for easy spraying, same thing. Like you can't spray a 30 foot high tree very easily, but if you have a nice little tree, then you can do it with a small sprayer or, you know, a hose end sprayer or something. So, you know, that's another reason why we, we kind of prune so that again, we can get in there and do the spraying we need to do. So lots of water sprouts produces lots of sugar for large sweet fruit. And this is the other reason why we prune fruit trees, particularly in the winter time or early, early spring, is that it encourages vigor. It makes the trees grow like crazy. So we trim the whole thing down so that all our fruit is really down low and wide and nice and horizontal branches. But when the uh, when these water sprouts take off, which is all the sucker growth from being pruned so hard, it just forms this like a forest of leaves over top of your fruit tree. And some people think, oh, I got to cut all those off, you know, and suckering like mad. But no, wait, stop. That's your production of sugar. All those leaves are producing the sugar that goes into the fruit. So, you know, just think about that, that that's your factory producing the sugar for the fruit. Now, what happens if you thin that fruit out? Holy man, it just gets to be massive. So just remember those things <laughs> that you don't necessarily want to remove all those, those water sprouts. Uh, some, some types of... Um, some types of trees, like I say, peaches kind of benefit a little bit from having more light come through. But if you're going to do that, again, you move it to a little bit in the summertime, depending on the peach. Is it early? Is it late? Ah, there's a whole bunch of things to think about. All right, so uh, horizontal branches are most valuable when it comes to fruit trees, of course. Super easy picking, easy to get at, easy to pick. Uh, know your fruit type to optimize your production. And that's more or less, again, to make sure that you're not just cutting off all the fruiting wood and wondering why you don't get any fruit. So make sure you know what type of what what types of branches or twigs or buds are you looking for to make sure that you're going to get the fruit you want and put it where you want. And the other thing is, is sometimes uh, you're finding those buds just everywhere, and it's like, geez, I don't, I really don't need a ton of fruit on this tree. I have to thin it all anyway. So as you're pruning, sometimes you'll be taking off stuff that you know is gonna be producing a bunch of flowers and it's actually thinning the fruit, 
during the pruning process. So it's a really good tip. And once you learn that, you're away to the races. So here's just a quick shot of those water sprouts on the fruit trees. You can see here that, the, that I'll just run, you can see my cursor here, and I'm just gonna run right across where the fruit is, is at this point or lower. Okay, there's a branch in the back there. So, so whoever's pruning this tree is keeping it pretty good. You know, you, got, you, could, you can walk under this tree pretty much. So it looks like it's about six or seven feet up to the bottom branches. So it makes it, they've obviously got it in a lawn here so they can mow and uh, get around that tree. But all the fruit production is in the bottom of the tree. And there's those water sprouts. These things are about six or seven, even eight feet long. They're quite huge. But those water sprouts are where, what's again, producing all the sugar for the fruit. This is an apple tree. But, uh, and you get a bunch of insects on there. You know, you get lots of aphids and things, but aphids are not really a big problem. Um, a, lot of, a lot of insects and animals like to eat those aphids, but uh, sometimes they, the trees may require a spray, sometimes early in the season, just to knock them back a notch. And then by summertime, there's all kinds of beneficial insects. And even the birds love to come and eat those, those insects can look a little ratty looking, but again, this is a, these are utility trees. We're using them for fruit production. And, uh, you know, I think that there's a happy medium in there, but the more you learn the you know, the better it goes, the more power you have for sure. So, so yeah.